Hello and welcome to the section, Working with Files. I'm going to make sure that you know everything you need in order to work with what is probably the most useful and commonly used management object, the lowly file. And believe me, you'll be working with files all the time. That's why I wanted to include it, even though we've already talked about scripting and advanced scripting and you're pretty far along, but this is really going to fast track you through something that could really be a stumbling block. So in this section, I'm going to cover the basics of working with files and then working with file permissions through access control lists, then a just deep enough look at working with XML files. And finally, we'll round it out by looking at how to import from and export to some really useful file types like CSV and JSON. Hello, and welcome to the video, Basics of Working with Files. In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know in order to perform your basic operations with files. That's you know things like creating files and then getting content into and out of a file, testing it for existence, is the file even there? And finally, verifying file integrity through using a file hash. Working with files in PowerShell can be a bit surprising in the way that most of the commands that we use when working with files don't use a file noun. You don't use a new-file or new-directory. Instead, it's new-item. And this is new item is very helpful in the way that it works across PowerShell providers. So if you're in a certificates folder, you can use new item to create a new certificate. You can create new variables in the variable folder, uh, variable provider, registry, and of course, file system. So here's how we create a file. But you'll also notice that there are some commandlets that do have file as part of the noun. We're, those are some special utility commandlets, and we're going to get into those too. Let's start with creating files. And there's a few options. First, there's new item. And we've seen this in several other videos. So I'll try not to be repetitive, but just a few reminders. The value parameter is optional. And if you include it, it sets the contents of the file. This can be a simple string like this. It could also be a complex object that is saved in a variable previously in your script. You can use the force parameter so that anything that's missing in the path will be created as part of it. If you omitted the force parameter and this C temp directory didn't exist, it couldn't create this file. There's also this new temporary file commandlet. And this is very easy. It doesn't include a lot of parameters. It just is very simple. New temporary file. It gives you the name. It gives you the location. It does it all for you. And here we've saved it into a variable called temp file. And this makes this temp file creation doing it in this way makes it a great option for saving some simple data, or like a log for, for instance, or that trace data that we talked about in previous videos. The other way to create a file is to use the commandlets that set the content of a file. If the file's not there, it'll create it for you. Here, for instance, if we get processes and select the name of the processes and then set the content of a file, if that file is not there, it will be created as part of it. Set content is one option and out file is another option and out file or a T object, which will split that text and put it both to the screen and to a file. Both have options for append so that it doesn't have to overwrite the file. Another line of text being sent to the output file of C temp new file dot text. You see with that, it does not display anything to the screen, but extra line of text to the same file. We'll also put it to the screen as well as to the contents of this file. So a big difference between the set content and the out file is the use of that append. Set content is very structured. If you're adding your content with set content, you're setting everything to the content of that file. And that can be very helpful in readability if you're getting content and setting content with the extra flexibility of adding something to it, I find that I usually rely on outfile. Once there is data in that file, you can output the contents of it by using get content. Output of the get content commandlet is not a single string, but an array of strings, one for each line of text in the file. 
Here, for instance, we can get the content of the DISM log, and then we can output the first few lines. If you do want to include the content of the file all as a single string, that is useful later as we explore JSON files. If you want to get all of that as one string, you would append the parameter dash raw, and that will get all of the content as a single string. Some of the other operations, renaming and copying and moving, those are also using the dash item commandlets. So copy item, move item, and rename item, those are all commandlets that will help us with renaming, copying, and moving files. But a common check that you'll be doing frequently in your PowerShell scripts is just to check whether or not a file exists. To do that, I want you to use the test path commandlet. So we can just use test path to see if the file exists. We've copied the files, that is, from ctemp to ctemp2, and now we check to see if the file exists, and we see that it does. We can also move files, and now temp2 is gone. There we go. We can set the file variable to that, and we can test that path, and if it's there, we can set some content. So it's worth noting that the test path doesn't return anything about the file. It doesn't return the file name. It doesn't return where it was. It doesn't return its contents. It only returns true or false, whether it exists. This means that it's useful in if then statements, like if test path file, then perform this script lock, or in do whiles or do until statements as well. So while testing the path is important, you may also be interested in knowing that a file integrity is intact. There is an easy way to do that. We can use the get file hash commandlet, and by using the get file hash, we can process a file using an algorithm to generate a hash code. That's a long string that, a simple explanation, it's a code that'll always be the same if the file is exactly the same. In fact, let's just output to the screen this, the, what we get when we do a file hash for a log file. If we do it again, nothing has changed on that file. The hash will always be the same. As long as the file is exactly the same, the hash will be exactly the same. If we add this line, which is add more content to that change file, and we get that hash again, something has changed in the file and the hash will be different, guaranteed. So we can use this hash to identify whether the file has changed, and that looks like this. We can start by setting the contents of the hash into a variable. We can make a change to the file, or in this case, we won't make a change to the file. And now we'll say, we've done some operation, and now we want to know if the hash is the same as the hash, hash property of our variable. We can run this all again, get the file hash again, and compare and see if it's the same or changed. That's super easy and it's super useful to verify that the file has copied over consistently or that some configuration file that you've got on your servers that identifies where the location of source files are, something like that, configuration file on the server is exactly the same as the one in source control.